when I recorded previously, I was on what I would call the shelf there, above the, the rocks of the shore, is kind of a shelf, a place where the water at a higher level, at a flood stage of the lake, has washed into that bluff, which 50 years ago was steep, straight sandstone. And now it's, it's washed away much of it, kind of a, a rocky meadow. And above it, the remainder of the stone bluff and the trees rising in that area above that trees of all variety and size and age covering that upper part and all of this in God's tender care not touched or interrupted much by human beings or livestock or plows and tractors or the wind and the waves. This is the place where eagles can be found in the winter, fishing in the waters. As we think about the next devotion, this is a uh, place we might think of. Jesus wanted to get away after being in his hometown and because of their unbelief, not being able to do much in the way of, of miracles for them. Jesus heard some bad news, some difficult news that contrasts the, the values of the world and worldly people with what we know in our hearts to be true and important, and that is the, the life of others, especially those who contribute goodness to the world and have spoken truth to power, who have said there's something more important than your comfort and wealth, O Herod, O King. There is a God in heaven who has blessed you and entrusted with you power. But for this, John got in trouble, speaking up to Herod about his sins, and no one likes to be reminded of their sins, and those in power will will use that power to, to shield themselves. But most particularly where it stings and where it hurts, it can cause people to do horrible things. And that is how John met his end, the end of his life. Yet Jesus speaks about John in the kingdom of heaven. He said, even the least of these who serve me will be greater than John the Baptist in the kingdom of heaven. And I don't know exactly what to make of that. In heaven, maybe we'll know whether there's a worldly sort of hierarchy or that we are all honored and loved and cherished by God. I certainly believe that that is true here and in heaven. So you hear the birds in the background. May God's peace be with you now and always. Amen. I talked earlier about the water washing away the soft layers and, and uh, leaving behind the, the stronger rocks, the more solid chunks of, of sandstone. And here we see near the water the, uh, that those layers and how the, the layer is being undermined by the, the water when it's at that level, washing away, washing in between and and we see the tumbled rocks. We see the tumbled rocks. And if we look over here in this direction, we see some larger rocks, even more disheveled than the ones that, that we saw before um, that I was sitting on, that have tumbled down, have tumbled down. And yet there remains the solid and the, the firm rock. I'm just drifting here at the moment. So I want you to think about, you can see the, the newer stone or the fresher stone there, the brighter color, where the, 
the wound is more recent of the stone falling away. And we can think of human power, sometimes trying to hold on and yet falling and falling. And Herod eventually came to his end, but he also did much, much damage as we will find in what I'm about to share. Again, the beginning of the 14th chapter and some verses that, that we skip over, that we skip over. This is John the Baptist, Herod wondered. He's been raised from the dead, and it's for this reason these powers are at work. The powers that they saw and work at Jesus had heard about. How could he be raised if he had not died? For Herod, he recalled, had arrested John, bound him, put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had been telling him, it's not lawful for you to have her. Though Herod wanted to put John to death, he feared the crowd because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, and she pleased Herod so much that he promised on oath to grant her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was grieved. Yet out of regard for his oath and for his guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in prison, and the head was brought on a platter and given to this girl who brought it to her mother. John's disciples came and took the body and buried it. And then they went and told Jesus. This is the passage immediately following our gospel reading for Sunday. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. Is there a place that I would want to get away? Well, I brought you here. I may get down far enough to the quarries. Sandstone was quarried and used in building buildings. We do good things with the resources that God has given us, um, particularly when we know that, that we are forgiven of our sin and not condemned by that, that grace of God in Jesus. But the central point I want to make in this devotion is that we also need to take time to be refreshed, to get away, as Jesus did. Jesus, who knew no sin and, and no condemnation, but was sent to serve others and, and build others up in the truth of God's love. He himself needed to get away, and yet the circumstances sometimes are more demanding than, than we want or, or understand. <clears throat> 